Hi, Bill McMurdo here, and I'm looking today just at some thoughts from this book here. It's called Ecclesia Rising by Dean Briggs, and it's a great book that I started to read on Scribd, I think, but then eventually got myself a hard copy, and I'd counsel you to do the same because it's so important for us to have these textbooks about Ecclesia, the Kingdom, and what I'd call New Wineskin Praying. We've got Bert McCaig coming, um, 11th of March, and every second Saturday thereafter, uh, um, for the time being, to teach on Kingdom Prayer, to train people on Kingdom Prayer. Bert and I had the um, day of prayer in our place last week, and it was a real blessing. And you know, very few people carry what Bert carries the understanding, as it says here in the back of this book, Jesus is building something far greater than a Sunday service. And Dean Briggs, a great guy, great teacher of the word. And I, I like his stuff, but he, he's in this uh, book here, he asked this question, when you assemble in church, do you think like one, ambassadors in a foreign land representing the will and character of your king? Two, the high command of an invasion force during wartime plotting strategies to take your region. And three, spiritual senators, and Bert uses that term a lot, legislating in prayer the higher law to which criminal, demonic activity and false ideologies must yield. Now, Dean Briggs raises important points here that I, that I do in my own teaching. And, you know... What we understand as church, church to us, to many of us, should I say, is really just a kind of nice wee sort of service. We we might have like three or four hymns and a prayer and a, a little sermon, or if we're more charismatic and modern, you know, a 40 minute worship service, followed by, you know, uh, an invitation to, to give into the work, uh, and then maybe a 10 minute pep talk. Yeah, I'm being harsh. I know I'm being harsh. And not all churches function like that. But a lot of churches have that mentality or mindset that really church is some kind of holy huddle um, where we do religious or spiritual stuff, but we don't legislate. See, church is legislation. Legislate, legislation. Leg, church is a legislator or legislature. What I mean by that is church or ecclesia as a governmental assembly. When you understand the word ecclesia, the Greek word that we translate as church, and are thinking about, and listen, I've been in this stuff for a long time, I've been in the ecclesia mindset for a long time, but I still get sucked into that church mindset, which is talking about the holy huddle, which is talking about some kind of um, kumbaya land idea where we're hiding from the world within the four walls of church or within someone's living room if we do house church. But church is where the Christians huddle together to do Christian stuff away from the prying eyes and interference of the world. If you think I've been harsh, then, then go away and think about this because I believe the Lord wants us to really now, after having a lot of time to be trained and taught this, I believe God is now saying to people, look, you've, you've had long enough to hold on to that church thing. And it's now time for you to become ecclesia minded. So we, we need to be ecclesia people. We need to be people who understand we're called here to be senators, to be governors, to be um, part of a parliament, an assembly in the earth. And I'm going to say here in Scotland, I'm not going to get into it just too much right now, but we're going to have to start shaping up manning up, maturing to the place where we understand God has called us to take Scotland and God has called us to govern Scotland. Now, I'm not talking about some kind of tyrannical ecclesi ecclesiocracy where we're, you know, we've got a number of Protestant popes and all that um, and we're just bossing people around and, and you know, having witch hunts and all that stuff. Um, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about proper governmental authority in the earth. And, yeah, saying no to wickedness and to ideologies and to people who have those ideologies 
that they think they can shape the Scotland they want to shape, which is based along the lines of Psalm 2, thrown off the cord and restraints of God's word and God's kingdom and just reinventing um, society. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen on our watch. That's we, God is looking for people who say that. So I'm, I'm kind of rambling a wee bit here, but I'm just really bringing out thoughts that I'm Ecclesia Rising. Get this book, Dean Briggs. And while I'm at it, you know, and I might do a separate plug for this, I love plugging other people's books. Um, because if they bless me, they should bless you. And I'm not saying that everything and every book I, I endorse, um, I completely endorse everything, but I do like to speak about books that I believe God, cutting edge, cutting edge stuff. This one here, Breaking Hell's Economy by Joseph Z. And I saw this book um, on Sid Roth's show. And I had to have it and I got it and, and, and I'm still reading through it and I'm being blessed by it. And I've got to say, I think this guy has been shadow uh, stalking me because a lot of the stuff that's in here um, I've been preaching over the years. So I don't mind if that's the case. Joseph, you're welcome to it. And if you got it by the revelation of the Spirit of God, then I know that I'm not um, I, I'm not in the wrong either because a lot of the stuff in it, and, and particularly good stuff about how Jesus was funded. See, oh, Jesus was a poor man. Well, Jesus was poor on the cross, and Joseph Z brings this out, and I I would go along with it because that's what I teach similar. I believe Jesus, um, I believe he enjoyed the wealth that he got from the Magi, or Magi, whatever, however you pronounce it. But I also think that there was a time in his life, um, and I've got a book, Jesus Millionaire, um, and I talk about this in the book. And if you want that book, just let me know. Um, just contact me and I'll, I'll get you a copy. But I believe there's a point where Jesus walked away from that wealth to live by faith, really. Uh, because when Jesus encountered the rich young ruler and told him to, you know, give it all away and, and give to the poor, the Spirit of God said to me one time, do you think that Jesus could have and would have done that if he hadn't? already passed that test himself you know god's not going to ask you to do things he's not capable of doing and to say that jesus was poor um but if that's at all true during his earth walk he must have chosen it because the blessing of the lord according to god's word in the old covenant was that if you lived a righteous life then you'd be blessed financially the blessing of abraham so let me just say this to you if you believe that Jesus was poor, then God would have had to be a liar to say that the righteous man, and no one was more righteous than Jesus, Jesus kept the law. Um, so anyway, get the book. These two books, Ecclesia Rising by Dean Briggs and Breaking Hell's Economy by Joseph Z. Um, the Both books speak about today. And by that I mean what we're living in today, what we're encountering today, and what our response should be. And both books will put in you a kingdom mindset, a dominion mindset, um, a mindset that makes you realise and understand and walk in the comprehension and the consciousness that God has called us to victory. And it's not just barely scraping by victory, it is dominion in the earth. And, you know, I'm, I'm here in Scotland and I'm telling you right now, God's kingdom is coming to Scotland. God's kingdom is go we're going to have a kingdom government in Scotland. We're not going to have a government, a political government in Scotland. We're going to have a kingdom government. It, the political government might still be there, but there will be an irre irrelevance to it. And it will just become an expression of the kingdom or it will just become something that's totally uh, swept aside by the kingdom. And I'm not being arrogant when I say that. But you know what, we had it with, with John Knox and I shared the other day, um, I shared it at the gathering and I shared it uh, uh, on my blog about how my visit to, with uh, Stevie and Emma McKee to uh, St Giles, God released to his great revelation. And it had to happen there because St Giles was, was the epicentre of John Knox's ministry when he came back. And really, the Reformation started to take root in Scotland and started to bear fruit in Scotland. And, you know, St Giles is therefore the epicentre of 
ecclesiastical government. And by that, I don't mean ecclesiastical as in a formal established church. I mean the ecclesia, okay? Scotland saw the ecclesia manifest under Knox and, and his followers. And we're going to see it in our time. We're going to see it greater than Knox. We're going to see a reformation that is greater even than what Knox had. I believe that. It's not just revival. See, revival will only penetrate so deep into the seven mountains. And it's the seven mountains that need to be... Um, they, it's the seven mountains that need to be penetrated and influenced. And so we're going to see mighty things. We're going to um, have reformation, 21st century reformation. Member church are pastored um, over in Burnbank in Hamilton. And we had these T-shirts with that on it, 21st century reformation. So we're going to see that. Um, and we're going to see the full expression, the fullness of God. The fullness of God in his body, the Ecclesia, here in Scotland. And it's going to be a pattern that goes to other nations. And I'm not just, you know, saying that to big Scotland up. Um, other people have already had that vision. Uh, the Covenanters had it, um, and other people have had it. The John and Richard McPhee and their followers in the 20th century. Jean Darnall, of course, very famous for her, her visions of revival coming to Scotland and through Scotland. So get those books and get books like them. There's another book um, by a guy called John Hamill, Turnaround Decrees. Uh, and again, I saw that in Sid Roth. As I said, I don't necessarily agree with everything in the books that I'd recommend, uh, but I agree with enough to say these books will change uh, your thinking uh, or, or consolidate, you know, some of the things that God has maybe shown you. And, you know, leaders are readers. I, it alarms me. I, I keep thinking about this. We have a faith library in our church, and, you know, I always look, and, and it alarms me that there's some good Christian books there and nobody even goes to look at them. You know, leaders are readers. Okay, I've always been a reader. Um, and so I know that reading changes you. Okay, and you know, I I, I, I like listening to, uh, to uh, messages. I like YouTube. Uh, I say the greatest invention of the 20th century was the cassette tape because you got to listen to uh, sermons and messages and teaching um, whatever you were doing driving along and so on and the greatest invention of the 21st century to me is YouTube because there are so many great messages online a lot of junk as well but you know you just put the junk aside great messages so you know you may be more of a hearer than a reader but my counsel is be both get the books I mentioned plug into great teaching on YouTube and other places and really, really just the message I wanted to share today is we need to get fired up. And if you're of an age where you're thinking of retiring, don't retire, refire. And that's a message for somebody today. So the Lord bless you folks. Till next time.